Great to have Dave O'Brien with us again, the voice of the Red Sox for the Nesson broadcast. And last time we had you, Dave, a lot of uncertainty. Now at least there's a plan in place. So is your life starting to take shape? My life got a lot more exciting several days ago, Tom, because, I mean, finally we get a chance to talk about baseball, Red Sox returning. I'm absolutely thrilled about the prospect. And even though it's 60 games, and you know as well as I do, that is going to be a blink of an eye, and it's going to be over that lends a, an air of fascination to this thing we've never had in baseball. What do you know so far, if anything, about how your job specifically is going to be affected? Yeah, we're getting asked that question a lot, as you, as you might imagine. And it's, it's as strange a set of circumstances, a uh, unique a set of circumstances as I've ever seen in broadcasting. So we're doing all the games from our Nesson studios in Watertown. That means home and road. No broadcast teams in all of baseball are getting on a charter flight. And we're not going to get inside Fenway Park. Now, we might be able to see workouts with some other members of the press when they kick off, but we're not going to see games at Fenway. Everything's going to be done inside the studio. And crowd noise is going to be pumped in. I'm hearing this by Major League Baseball. They're doing it for all 30 teams to make it uniform. So that's going to be a little bizarre, a little different. Yeah, I mean, how do you even, not the crowd noise, but just preparing for a broadcast, and you can clear this up too, is it going to be one feed? Is it going to be one feed to both teams, or will there be, a, does the visiting team have their feed and the home team have their feed? Clear yeah, that. when the Red Sox are playing at Fenway Park, our broadcast guys, our director, Mike Narachi, our producer, Dan Aspen, will be providing that feed, sort of a world feed. Got it. And I did soccer many years ago, and those world feeds work really, really well on the international stage, and vice versa when the Red Sox are on the road. Interesting. So let's talk a little bit about what you're most excited about as this team prepares to take the field. It seems, you know, everyone better be healthy, right? You'd imagine at this point that the guys are good to go. Yeah, they ought to be. I mean, they've been working out, and it, you know, the more I read and the few guys that I've spoken to, they've been very diligent about it. But that still doesn't mean, even though they are going to hit the ground running, it doesn't mean that pitchers are going to be ready to go seven innings, you know, as often they are, six or seven innings at the end of spring training. So that part's going to, I think, from my way of thinking, the offense is going to be well ahead of the pitchers at the outset when the games begin. I think that's really good news, Tom, for the Red Sox, because this is an excellent offensive team. Even with the loss of Mookie Betts, you and I have talked about You've still got Rafael Devers. You've still got Xander Bogarts, J.D. Martinez. The heart of that lineup is really a bit of a murderer's row. I know the Yankees have what they have, but the Red Sox are in great shape as far as scoring runs. So if they have an opportunity to, to get some wins early, I think it's going to be because of the bats. And up against this schedule, they really have to get some wins early. Yeah, a couple of guys you didn't mention who I'm curious to see, Pilar and Verdugo, guys that are going to be out there in the outfield at some point, some place. Where do you foresee them making a mark? Well, you know, Pilar's going to play right field. Uh, he's got to fill in for Mookie Betts. Good luck doing that. But this is a guy who's always been right on the cusp of winning a gold glove. He's an outstanding defensive outfielder, really one of the best in the American League. Verdugo needed this time to get healthy because of the back problem. And now he gets a chance to literally hit the ground running. This kid is a, he's a very hard-nosed player, but he needed to be healthy because the worst thing in the world for Alex Verdugo coming over in the trade would have been to come out flat as the so-called replacement for Mookie Betts. Now he doesn't have to worry about that. So there are some silver linings health-wise for a lot of guys. You brought up the fact that pitchers likely won't go deep into games most notably early, which is going to put a lot of pressure on decision making for Ron Renneke and also that middle reliever bullpen crew. What do we know about that group? Well, I think it's going to be huge. And I think you're because of the taxi squad and because there are going to be a lot of interchanging parts. I think that part of the club will, will have to really overperform the early part of the schedule because the bullpen right to the end of the game was an open question mark when the Red Sox went into spring training. You still have, you know, known commodities. You've got Matt Barnes and guys like that on the back end. But there are going to be a number of guys we do not know yet how they perform in the fourth inning, the fifth inning, the sixth inning. That's where the Red Sox are going to win and lose games, I think, if this bullpen is not up to snuff early on. And, you know, I mentioned Ron Renneke. Ron's really good with a bullpen. He did it in Milwaukee, but he has not been a manager in a while. Mm -hmm. He's a terrific bench guy. He was great with Alex Cora. He was loved inside that clubhouse. But now he's the guy calling that shot at the end. That's going to be really interesting. So we got 60 games, 40 of which will be played against the American League East. A third of the schedule, 20 games, going to be against the National League East. So what do we know about the National League East? 
it is ridiculously good. We know that the reigning world champs are coming out of there, the Washington Nationals, and they didn't even win the division last year. They were a wild card team in that division. The Atlanta Braves won that division after winning 97, and they are a loaded ball club with Acuna Jr. and Albies and all those guys. They've got power. They've got some speed. They have a very good pitching staff. They're a team that believes they're supposed to win the World Series. So, I mean, it's, it's a division. The New York Mets could go either way. They're a real wild card, but strong pitching. They've got a guy who hit 50 home runs a year ago. I think the Mets are going to be a factor. Just look out for that division because, look, the, the schedule makers in the end will do the Red Sox no favors between the AL East and the National League East. As you say, Tom, that's the schedule this year. Yeah, it's going to be going to be fun to watch. And it's good to hear your voice here on Boston 25, but it's going to be great to hear your voice on these Red Sox telecasts. So get loose, drink that tea, and we can't wait to hear you. I can't, can't wait to get back at it. Thanks, Tom. <laughs>